Hey guys, Tisha here, and we are back with another Becoming Sister Wives read along. This is Christine and Cody section. I want to apologize for any noise you may hear. I am busy and I want to make sure that you all have something this weekend. So even though this isn't the best time to film, I'm hoping that you all bear with me. We start off with Christine. I was raised in a polygamous family just outside of Salt Lake. My grandfather was the head of our church, which means my family has been closely involved with all aspects of our faith since I can remember. You could say that when it comes to our church, I'm connected. Now we know that that was one of the main things that Cody has always told us about is how Christine was like polygamy royalty. Although I was raised polygamous, it wasn't until I was 17 that I decided without a doubt that I was going to accept the principle of plural marriage. It took me a while to come to this decision. I reflected and prayed and I turned inward until I had my answer. Eventually, I developed a strong testimony about the way I wanted to live my life. The biggest influence on my decision to live the principle of plural marriage was my grandmother. She loved having sister wives and knew that the strongest relationship in her marriage was with them. Isn't that odd that that was her strongest relationship that her grandmother had was with her sister wives? Because even though Christine doesn't have the strongest relationship with all of them, we know that she has a strong relationship with Janelle. When I decided that I was going to enter into plural marriage, I knew that it would be only as a third wife. Even as a teenager, I was certain that this was the path for me. I understand how many people might think that this is a strange preference. Why would I want to come third when I could come first? But when you think about it, if you are as committed to plural marriage from a young age as I was, you're less interested in the monogamous stage of the relationship than in the plural stage. I wanted sister wives as much as I wanted a husband. It's a common misconception, at least in my worldview, that it's best to enter a family as first wife. People often think incorrectly that the first wife has the highest status and the most security. I wonder if that's what um, Mary thought going into it, because she was the one who originally had the legal marriage. I know she said that it didn't matter, but I think deep down it did. I never saw it this way. In fact, in my opinion, being the first wife takes too much work and involves too much self-sacrifice. You have to give up your life entirely and be joined at the hip to your husband. It's just you and your husband until the day he marries a second wife. This kind of single-minded devotion never appealed to me. I'm independent and I like my freedom. It's funny how they all talk about independence and freedom, but then you have Christine who really didn't want um, she didn't want to be alone at some point in her marriage. She wanted her husband. And I think that maybe at some point, I don't know when it was, something happened with her that that changed because now we know she is in a monogamous relationship. I think you can be independent and still monogamous. It's, it's important to, to map out your own time, but she didn't see it as that back then. Being the second wife didn't seem like a better option either. In fact, I think that would have been worse than being the first wife. The second wife has the hardest job as it put in the most uncomfortable position because she's the one who comes along and disrupts the marriage of the first wife and her husband. That's a good point. You can't blame her. It's not the second wife's fault. It's just the nature of her role. She's the wedge that comes between the couple, and I was never going to put myself in that position. I wonder if this question is asked to Janelle if she'll agree with this. No matter how fair and understanding a first wife is, there's no way to avoid the emotional struggles and the heartache when a second wife joins the family. But the third wife, she's the lucky one. She's the one who comes along and makes peace between the first two wives. The third wife is in a blessed position. She doesn't have to face marriage on her own without the help from her sister wives or bear the burden of breaking up a previously monogamous couple. I was going to be a third wife all the way. So Christine was looking forward to being the bridge. And I think for some time she was. 
But at some point, something happened where that shift. Around my 19th birthday, my sister Wendy went on a survival trek with our church. The leaders of her group were a newlywed couple, Mary and Cody Brown. When Wendy returned from her adventure, all she could talk about was Cody. Cody, Cody, Cody. She was full of stories about how strong and athletic Cody was. Cody pulled us all up a hill, she said. He threw us over a wall one by one. Wendy explained that Cody and Mary were new to our group, which is why I'd never heard of them before. As it turned out, Mary had been a member for years. She'd even been over to my house on several occasions, but no one noticed her until she married Cody. I think this further proves that a lot of Mary's identity came once Cody came along, which may be one of the reasons why she struggles to leave him because in her chapter, Mary let us know that she went to the church all these years and they didn't even know who she was. They didn't notice her until Cody. And here you have Christine saying, I found out that she had been there all this time and I didn't know who she was until she, she was with Cody. So how does, how does that go? Why is it that some women go unnoticed. Just wondering. The next day, I went to church with Wendy. The hall was crowded. I was checking out the crowd when my eyes landed on a handsome young man. Without my sister telling me, I knew he was Cody. I thought, wow, Wendy forgot to mention how cute Cody is. He really, really cute. Cody. I have to admit that I don't remember seeing Christine in church that morning. I had been in the church for only six months, so the group was fairly new to me. There were different faces at the church each week, which made it difficult for me to remember everyone that I met. A week after I returned from the survival trek, our church held a dance. Of course, I attended with my new wife, Mary. Although I'd met Janelle once or twice, we were only casual acquaintances at this point. But there was one girl who caught my eye. Christine. She was wearing a turquoise dress with a lace ruffle at the collar. She was bubbly and sweet and as cute as anyone I'd ever seen before. So he told, tells us that he wasn't attracted to Christine, but here you are saying that she was cute and sweet and bubbly. Those all sound like appealing characteristics to me. She was also overflowing with positivity. Her liveliness and good cheer were infectious. However, I was still a newlywed and new to the polygamous faith. Although I thought Christine was really cute, I wasn't yet ready to consider a second wife. So he met Christine and he Christine was in his orbit at the same time Janelle was kind of in his orbit while he was with Mary. Got it. I didn't know this, but Christine had a crush on another boy that night. She was just 19 and she was a romantic, but there was an undeniable spark between us. When I looked at her, I had a feeling, call it a sixth sense, that our destinies were interlaced. Mary and I didn't have any newlywed friends. And since we didn't have any children and Mary wasn't pregnant, we spent most of our time with single people our age. We always had a group at our house eating ice cream and hanging out. Christine had a big circle of friends and she always seemed to be in our midst. And since Christine's family was so involved in our church, they regularly hosted gatherings to which Mary and I were usually invited. While I had an inkling that perhaps something important was starting to develop with Christine, I was awed with how adorable and upbeat she was. Mary and I weren't looking yet to add to our family. We were newlyweds and I still very much a couple in love. This made it difficult for me to hang out with my buddies because it would mean leaving her alone. Eventually, Christine and Mary became friends, which was great. But when I started to notice Christine was growing interested in me, and when I started visualizing a future together, I knew that exploring this would be unfair to Mary at this point. If Christine and I started hanging out alone, in essence, if we were to start courting, Mary would be abandoned by her two closest friends. So Christine and Mary seem to have been closer friends than Janelle and Mary. This is confusing to me. Mary had inadvertently made it clear to me on several occasions that she wasn't prepared to court Christine. One weekend at a field day for the younger members of our faith, I was busy being my loud, boisterous self. I was running all over the field we were gathered at, 
host, hoisting, no, hosing people down with water. Everybody was chasing me in order to pay me back, but they couldn't catch me. In the middle of all this, I heard Christine cry out, Cody, my masculine man, Christine. He didn't say Christine. I'm saying Christine. Christine was real bold. I looked over at Mary and I could almost hear her growling. I hadn't seen many examples of plural marriage since I was new to the faith. So this was the first time I ever experienced it close up. But I couldn't blame her. We were very young. Why out of everything did you say that it was a growl? Why does he like comparing his wives to animals? Remember, we heard that Christine was panting and Janelle was panting to be in the family. Why is everything always compared to an animal? Despite our initial resistance, something was pulling us together. I couldn't deny that Christine would be a part of my family someday, but we needed to grow up first. So Christine was attracted to him and wanted him even before Janelle was being courted by him. That's what this sounds like. Christine, I loved Cody and Mary, and although my crush on Cody was getting serious, I wasn't interested in marriage yet. Still, I was always eager to hang out with them. Whenever my parents hosted a volleyball party, Mary and Cody always topped the guest list. After spirituality and faith, the trait my dad values most is athleticism, so he was taken with Cody from the start. Whenever I talked to my dad about boys I was interested in, he always steered the conversation in the same direction. And how is Cody, he asked. Cody made a big splash when he joined our faith. He was nice looking, which impressed a lot of the women, but he was also well-spoken and outspoken. He was confident when he talked in front of a crowd. He knew how to take a spiritual concept and deliver it in a positive and inspiring way. He made a good impression on the people in charge of our church and was often called upon to speak at fireside meetings. About a year and a half after I first met Cody and Mary, Cody organized a youth trip to his parents' ranch in Wyoming. They love taking people to their ranch. Cody wanted to expose his younger peers to his parents' lifestyle and introduce his parents to younger people, younger, young people in their faith. By this time, it was pretty clear that I had developed a serious crush on Cody. I was always hanging around Mary and him. So when we all piled in our caravan of cars to drive to Wyoming, I got someone to drive my car and I made sure that I rode in Cody's. 19 people headed up to the ranch for the weekend. We set off from my house in Utah, but when we hit a mountain pass, we drove into a massive snowstorm. It was unbelievably slow going and we had to stop and take turns pushing one another's cars. The drive should have taken half a day, but we wound up being on the road overnight because of the weather. Since we were all young, it was fun being out there together. It felt like an adventure. Cody, we drove all night to Wyoming. It was dangerous. Mary and I had rode in the front seat and Christine sat in the back. I kept looking at Christine in the rear view mirror. For months, I've been watching her. You hear that for months he's been watching her. I loved her spark, her bubbliness. She was so full of life and enthusiasm, just the perfect person to have along a miserable drive. In fact, I was discovering that Christine was the kind of person I wanted to have around all the time. She lit up every room and brought a fun, positive energy to an event. Mary often stood on the sidelines during games and group activities, but Christine was always willing to participate in anything, no matter how silly. When we set out on our road trip, I was convinced that Christine was the cutest girl in the world, although she was a little chubby. What? Back then, I was young and super official enough to care about physical appearances. See, when Robin tells us that Cody likes girls on the thicker side, I don't believe that. I think that that's what he told Robin because of the way that his wives looked in appearance. But I think Cody is very much so attracted to smaller frame women and that's okay, just be honest about it. I was young and superficial enough to care about physical appearance. After we'd been on the road all night, we stopped at a gas station. I'd been drinking soda pop to stay awake and my stomach felt sour and upset. Just thinking about food made me queasy. 
Christine went into the cookie mart and bought herself what seemed like the largest portion of chili cheese nachos that I'd ever seen. The sight of those nachos turned my stomach. I couldn't watch her eat them. She must have been starving because she was eating them so quickly and there was chili sauce and nacho cheese everywhere. We hear about this, he, that he hates the way she eats nachos. Looking back, I hate myself for the thoughts I had that moment. But the, sli the sight of this chubby girl in my car devouring chili cheese nachos for breakfast put the brakes on our relationship. It brought about the most superficial and shallowest side of me. I still liked her, in fact. I liked her very much. But the nacho experience cooled my attraction a little. Well, a lot. Cody very much so has always cared about appearances. He shows this by this right now. He tried to act like it was something he overcame, but I don't think he oh, he ever truly overcame it. I think that it was always something that bothered him. Like when Robin brings up the stretch marks and stuff that he still dealt with, I think that it still was a problem. Christine, of course I had no idea that I grossed Cody out with my nachos. I was an overweight kid who liked junk food a little too much. And of all the junk food in the world, chili cheese nachos were my favorite. When we finally got to the ranch, Cody transformed into a hero. He was a total stud. All the girls on the trip watched him with their mouths wide open, myself included. I've seen Cody in action back in Utah. I've seen him display his talents in church, and I've seen how he transformed himself into the life of every party. But now I was seeing a whole new side of him. Cody was the complete cowboy. At the ranch, he was instantly in his element. He got right in there and wrangled the cows. He worked the fields. He shoveled and cleaned and got down and dirty with the animals. I was totally impressed. I thought Cody was the coolest guy in the world. When I got back home, I was gushing about Cody to a friend. She knew that I wanted to be a third wife, so we came up with a plan. She'd marry Cody first and I'd be his second wife. A few months later, I would join them as a third wife. I took this plan much more seriously than my friend who eventually got married to another man. My visit to Wyoming had made a fantastic impression on me and I was eager to return. I had become very close to Cody's sister. So when she invited me to spend time to spend the summer with her at the Browns Ranch, I accepted immediately. They all like becoming close to siblings. I feel like they all find ways to wiggle their way in the family. Janelle's was supposedly through Mary because she loved her family and when Cody's dad since her mom was with them. And now Christine via the sister. Mary did it too, kind of with the sister. While I was living with the brand. I wonder if it's the same sister. Anyway, while I was living with the Browns, a local family started to express their interest in our faith. They had a daughter who, on one visit, spotted a picture of Cody. The minute I saw her look at it, I knew she'd be interested in him. I felt very threatened by her. She was beautiful and thin. I was immediately afraid she'd catch Cody's eye. A few months later, after I met her, this girl was invited to come to an event in Utah for the younger members of our faith. Since I was going down, it fell on me to drive her and to introduce her to some of my friends. Not doing so would have appeared selfish. I drove the new girl and her brothers to Utah. The whole ride down, I kept saying to myself, what are you doing, you idiot? I was completely threatened by her. When I got to the youth event, I immediately realized that all my fears were well-founded. Right away, Cody and Mary took particular notice of her. Their interest was overwhelming and undeniable. I was heartbroken and jealous, tortured by the fact that Cody seemed to find her more attractive than me. To make things worse, she and Mary hit it off immediately. So Christine lets us know that she wasn't jealous by the other wives. That's what she says, right? Not until Robin came along. But here she is jealous of this girl and she's not even a wife yet. They become inseparable, instantaneous best friends. One morning after I returned from the ranch, Cody and Mary came to pick me up. We made plans to spend the day together in the city. Before we left, we lingered on the porch of my parents' house. Cody and Mary had strange looks on their faces. They seemed excited, but a little nervous. Then they told me that they were courting the girl. I introduced them to at the youth conference. I was devastated. It ruined my day. In fact, it ruined my year. I decided then and there that I was not gonna marry Cody. 
no matter what happened. It wasn't because of Cody. It was because of the girl he and Mary were courting. She was too young and too cute, and I just couldn't see her in my future. I broke off the friendship. I couldn't be around Cody and Mary while they were courting someone else. Cody and Mary's news was not the most devastating blow I received that year, not by a long shot. A few months after I returned to Utah, my parents told me that they were getting a divorce. Even worse, my mother had decided to leave our faith, which felt like the worst kind of abandonment. I was stunned and inconsolable. I felt as if my world was disintegrating. I'd seen no signs of trouble between my parents and I couldn't imagine a life in which we would no longer be a cohesive family. I completely shut down. I didn't want anything to do with any of my old friends. I wonder why Christine was so oblivious because in the most recent episode of Sister Wives on season 18, we hear her talking to her brothers and her brothers are saying how with the different wives in the household that you can feel the energy like you can feel when it was going to be a bad day and somebody was going to have a moment and Christine was like I always just felt like it was fun so it's I want to know why her experience seems to be so different from what her brother's experience because obviously there were things going on because here you are completely surprised by the fact that your mom is leaving your family. I completely shut down. I didn't want anything to do with any of my old friends. I couldn't bear associating with people in Cody's circle or people who know my family when it was intact. I turned inward. I told my father that I wasn't interested in dating and that if a boy approached him and expressed interest in me, I didn't want to know about it. I was so shaken by my parents' divorce that I wanted to make sure I was solid in my faith before I committed myself to someone else. Naturally, I questioned the whole concept of marriage. If my parents couldn't sustain their relationship, what chance did I have when the time came? I can understand that. Even though I cut myself off from a lot of my friends, Mary and I still talked on the phone from time to time. I resisted these phone calls because I didn't want to hear about the courtship. It had been prolonged because Cody and Mary wanted to wait for the girl they were courting to turn 18 before making their engagement official. Even though I wanted nothing to do with it, I heard when they got engaged and I knew when they set the date for the wedding. What? I didn't know all this happened. A week before the wedding, I received a phone call. I was standing in the kitchen when I answered the phone. It was Mary on the other end of the line. My heart nearly exploded with joy, and Mary explained that the wedding had been called off. It was the happiest day of my life. I felt as if I could re-enter the world again. I immediately welcomed Cody and Mary back, but my happiness was short-lived. One day, completely out of the blue, Cody called me up. Christine, he said, Janelle is driving me crazy. I can't stand it. She really frustrates me. Who is Janelle, I said. I had no idea what, who he was talking about. You know her, Cody said. You've met her here and there. I had no idea why Cody was bringing this problem to me. Anyways, there was a, super, there was a simple solution. If this, if this woman, Janelle, was making Cody crazy, wouldn't the easiest thing to do be to stop associating with her? how wrong i was why did he call her with that see this is the stuff about cody cody was cody was keeping contact with janelle and meeting up with janelle and talking to janelle without mary knowing he was having conversations with janelle that did not include mary now we have here where we're hearing that he was calling Christine and he just out of the blue called her to tell her that Janelle was driving him crazy. Why wouldn't he have that conversation with his wife who knew, who knew Janelle? The next thing I knew, he and Mary had married Janelle. Of course, I thought this was really weird because Cody had told me that she was driving him crazy. It took me a while to realize what kind of crazy Cody meant. Why does Cody talk in circles? Why isn't he just direct? After Janelle joined their family, they moved to Wyoming. I had just left Cody and Mary back into my life, and now they have moved away with another wife. I hadn't just lost a man who was special to me. I lost my best friends. So she was very close to Mary and Cody. And it it turned. This is crazy. 
This is really crazy. Um, you call her to tell her that you're crazy, but you meant you were crazy about Janelle. Why did you tell her that? Did you want to make her jealous? Cody was playing games when he did that. We already know that Cody thinks everything is a game. This is an example if you ask me. Cody. After I married Janelle, we traveled down to Utah for a weekend to visit Mary's parents. While we were there, we invited Christine over for dinner. I was used to the gregarious, bubbly Christine, but when she showed up that evening, I immediately sensed an underlying sadness and turmoil within her. It made me sad to see her struggling. On her way out the door, I pulled her aside. We stepped out on the porch so we could chat. Then I asked her what's wrong. Nothing. Everything's fine, she said. I knew she wasn't telling the truth, and I told her so. I insisted that she tell me what was going on. She was my friend. I loved her, and I needed to know what was breaking her heart. It's my parents' divorce, she said. This admission opened up the floodgates, and suddenly Christine felt that she could be open and honest with me once more. I felt the old spark that had always been between us ignite again. You know, Christine, I said, this ordeal may help you in the future. It will make you stronger and more self-aware. And one day you're going to marry a man who's going to appreciate that you've been through something like this and that you have survived it. Yeah. And that man hopefully is the man that she's with now because it wasn't Cody. I didn't tell her at the time, but I had a feeling that man she would marry was going to be me. It's always you. Christine, Cody really knew how to break my heart when he told me that one day I married a man who appreciated my strength. I was distraught. It seemed that he was implying that he was not going to be that man in my future. Even though I was devastated, I was still more than a little smitten. That night when Cody left, I stood at the door to Mary's parents' house and said goodbye. It's not goodbye, Cody said. It's au revoir. Even though Cody line was cheesy, it sent a current of electricity down my spine. Girl, that's all it took. He was flirting with me. Cody shut the door and walked down the steps with Mary toward their car, leaving me inside. Mary's family immediately sensed what had passed between Cody and me. They all gave me knowing looks. Their faces were warm and inviting as if they were giving me and Cody their approval. Mary's family's encouragement was too much for me. I believe I gave a small fist pump of joy, then swooned on the couch. I have always been a little dramatic. I knew that no matter what he said, Cody was still the one for me. A few months later, Cody and Mary came down to Utah for New Year's ball at our church. Y'all, stuff always happens around New Year's for these people. Cody asked me to dance over and over. I was giddy and I could barely keep my feet on the floor. It was the best night of my life. I felt as if I was glittering and glowing. Right after New Year's, I got a phone call from Mary saying she was planning a surprise party for Cody in Wyoming. She wanted to know if I would bring a group of friends from Utah. Naturally, I was delighted. I simply couldn't wait to see Cody again. When Cody walked into the room for his surprise party and saw a bunch of us gathered there, his eyes locked on mine. I knew then how he felt. It gave me courage. The next day, we found ourselves alone for the first time. We were sitting on the couch, and I just came out with it. Of all the guys I know, you are the one I'd want to marry. I was proud of myself for being so forthcoming and honest. Mary's sister, Teresa, and I drove back to Utah that night. We giggled the entire ride about my future with Cody. When I got back home, I immediately approached my grandfather, who was the head of our church. Should Cody Brown ask, I said, tell him that answer is yes. Let him know that I definitely want to be part of his family. Christine was, was bold. Cody, Christine really made it easy for me to get permission to court her. When I called her dad, he was thrilled. This is great, Cody. This is great, he said. It was exactly what he'd been hoping for. Christine's father was aware of how she glowed when, she, when we were together. He was also aware of how she had pushed all other boys to the sidelines in favor of me. He wanted her to be happy, and now he knew that she made me happy. Christine just loves you her father said. His only question for me was regarding my loyalty to our church. In his mind, this single question determines worthiness. Since the day I converted my faith has never wavered, not for a single second. I told him that and he was convinced. 
On Valentine's Day, I asked Mary's sister Teresa, who lived in Utah near Christine, to buy a bouquet of roses. I instructed her to write, let's get the ball rolling on the card. Teresa offered to deliver the roses to Christine at work. So this man used Mary's sister to deliver these flowers. There was nobody else he could get to do it. Christine was a title clerk at a car dealership. The whole office knew that she was from a polygamous family. In fact, they knew that she had a crush on me, a man with two wives. It's a testament to Christine's outgoing nature and wonderful personality that people don't judge her for her beliefs. It turns out that the day I asked Teresa to send Christine flowers, Christine had called in sick to work. But by some wonderful coincidence, she had called Teresa to tell her that she was unwell and would be staying home. So Teresa knew where to deliver the roses. That night I called Christine. We were both overjoyed and a little giddy. The following weekend, Janelle and I traveled down to Utah. Janelle generously offered to hang out with some people in our church so that I could have some alone time with Christine. Because remember, Janelle is the one who doesn't really care about all that stuff. And at this point... Janelle wasn't in love with Cody yet. She just knew that she was supposed to be with him, but she wasn't in love with him. Janelle was very sweet and accepting of my courtship with Christine. I knew that things were difficult between her and Mary in the house, and I believe she was hoping for a new sister wife to be her ally or friend. So they were having difficulties, and Christine was supposed to come in to do exactly what she told us she wanted to do from the very beginning as young as 17, which is be the third wife and help be the bridge. Mary was slightly more prickly when I started courting Christine. However, she liked Christine and was aware of how close the two of us were. I'm sure as far as Mary was concerned, bringing Christine into the family was just a matter of time. Christine and I spent as much time together as possible that weekend. It wasn't what I call romantic. Christine was quite puritanical in her view of romance and courtship, but we had fun. Oh, so he was saying she was a prude. She wouldn't let him hold her hand um, in her pocket or sneak and give him a kiss. I think that's what he's saying. I think we held hands. Oh, oh yeah, they did hold hands. We held hands and maybe we hugged once or twice, but that was the extent of it. That weekend, we got engaged. I wanted to prolong our engagement, but Christine didn't want to. Christine was ready. Because why wouldn't you want to have a, a little bit of an engagement? She insisted on setting a wedding day as quickly as possible. She believed that a long courtship would be inappropriate and unfair on her new sister wife. So this is why. Okay. So remember, go back to how much Christine struggled with Cody leaving and doing things and going out of town when it came to Robin. So she didn't want a long courtship because she didn't want to take away from her other wi the, the other sister wives. Makes sense. She didn't want to be running around with a married man. I tried telling her that I wasn't quite ready, but Christine felt that she had already waited so long. We had been friends for three years. So he's making it sound like he was pressured. We didn't get married. We decided to get married in six weeks. The minute I asked Christine to marry me, I realized that I was once, I once again acted too quickly. I was in over my head. I was not even 25. I had... I already had two wives and Janelle was expecting our first child. The thought of trying to bring Christine into our family gave me serious pause. I'm afraid I showed up at our wedding with what Christine calls a thousand yard stare. Suddenly I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders. I was nervous and apprehensive. So he had regret shortly after he proposed. Shortly after they decided to get married because we're talking about a six week time frame. I knew there was a lot about my life Christine didn't understand. She had only ever seen me as the life of the party and the good time guy. She didn't know how tense things were between Mary and Janelle and hadn't had much opportunity to get to know them herself. So my question is, anyone, because I know I do have some polygamists who watch me, anyone who practices polygamy, when you're merging these other wives into the picture, do they not do counseling as a family? Is there not advisement as a group on how to maneuver? Because it seems like one of the problems is 
the the foundation isn't solid before the wives even came into the picture even mary it seems like there's important things that they did not discuss like okay yeah we know we need to pick up another wife we know that we feel like we're gonna have another wife but what does that look like it seems like they missed the mark on that um when i proposed i was working at a job that was crushing my soul mary and janelle were miserable with each other and i didn't know how to negotiate a truce between them and now i was introducing a third wife into an unstable environment i had no doubt that christine was the right person but i sensed it was too early to marry her all of this was running through my head as i joined christine in marriage what I didn't know then was that Christine would become a major factor in our success as a family. Her kindness and her positive nature brokered a peace in our household. Christine saved our bacon, as I like to say. She saved the browns. But back then, all I could see were the struggles that lay ahead. I worked right up until the day we got married. I even had a hard time getting off work to attend my own wedding. Christine had to organize the whole wedding herself. Neither my father nor Christine's mother attended the ceremony. Why? Why didn't... Well, I know why Christine's mom didn't because at that point she left polygamy. But why didn't Cody's father, seeing as to how his father was very much so a part of polygamy? It was a hard day for us. I didn't have time to plan a honeymoon. In fact, it didn't even occur to me to plan one. No one told me that I should. Why do you have to be told that? You, you had one for your other wife, didn't you? What, you had one for Janelle, didn't you? When I wasn't buried in my work, I was a ping pong ball bouncing in between two wives who always had their bristles up. Obviously, they weren't interested in advising me on what I should do with Christine. Why do you have to be... Oh, my God. After our wedding, Christine and I got into the car and drove to Montana. It was a tense trip, and I had to admit that I wasn't my most cheerful self. Christine and I had gone from being buddies to being married. We hadn't had time to get used to each other, and I hadn't prepared myself for the transition of adding a new wife to my family. Christine, I was shaken when Christine... Oh, excuse me. I was shaken when Cody showed up at our wedding with that look on his face. I was even more devastated when I learned that he hadn't planned a honeymoon. I was hoping that we'd finally have a romantic getaway, something special that told me how thrilled he was to have me in his family. I was young and naive. I had no idea how to tell Cody what I wanted from him. I just feel like they, they everything is done so quickly. If you can't even say what it is that you want, you don't need to be getting in a marriage. Because you should know that. My opinion. Y'all let me know yours. On our honeymoon, a drive through the sticks of Montana, I was struck by the realization that I didn't know Cody very well. Once we got into the car, he still had a faraway look on his face that I'd seen at our wedding. He seemed distant and unreachable. I began to understand that he felt overwhelmed. However, I didn't know how to talk to him about what he was feeling. I had no idea how to reach out to him. I just sat there in silence. Watching him drive with that look on his face made me unbearably sad. I realized that I had no idea how to express my feeling with him or ask him to share his with me. I never doubted that Cody was the man of my dreams, but I began to worry that I'd marry him too soon. Until our honeymoon, I had thought he was a fun-loving guy, but that was the extent of it. Now there was this distant, grumpy man at my side, burdened by something I couldn't understand, and I worried that I might be the source of his anxiety. Like many young women, I had idolized marriage. I had this silly notion that the moment you got married, your problems ended. I was fixated on the idea of a happily ever after. I thought marriage, especially plural marriage, would be absolute bliss. What could be better than being blessed with a husband and sisters in one fell swoop? Why do these people not talk to their parents about this? Or do they talk to their parents? Because these are conversations that they should have with their children. I feel like the fact that these women are so unaware of what they're getting themselves into and the fact that they really don't get a chance to know this man is sucky. What a sucky wedding day. What a sucky wedding night. 
I didn't understand that marriage is something you must work on. I didn't know that true love isn't instantaneous, but something that develops over time. I would hope that you would love each other and be in love with each other before you all got married. But it seems like that's not the case because we know he wasn't in love with Janelle. And here Christine is telling us that it's something that develops over time. While Cody and I did love each other, it took us about a year from the day we were married to fall completely head over heels for each other. It would be a hard year, a hard year but well worth the wait. Oh, guys, this one was a, was interesting. Um, so Christine kind of initiated things. Cody knew that he wanted Christine. Cody was turned off by Christine being a little chunky. And by the way, she ate nachos. And then he changed his mind about Christine just to then later on end up picking somebody other than Christine to play games by telling her like he he was crazy about Janelle and all those other things to play games by not being honest with what was going on with Mary and Janelle because she didn't know and Cody even said it himself in his portion of the book that Christine didn't even know that they were having problems that it was kind of like a war zone at his home because they weren't getting along so you have a new wife edition you have a baby edition and you have two wives that aren't getting along one of which already has problems with your current wife and seems to be uncomfortable even though she likes her as a friend is uncomfortable of your now third wife and that is how we end cody and christine's chapter you all let me know your thoughts down below until next time, 